everyone, I'm thriller author J.F. Penn and today on Killer Thriller TV I'm here with best-selling author Katya Leaf. Hi Katya! Hi Joanna, nice to see you. You too. Now why don't you start by telling us a bit more about you and your writing background? Uh, I, I have been writing for a long time. Um, I started as a teenager and when I first published novels, they were um, small press novels, um, literary, so-called, I like to say so-called literary, um, published by a, a British publisher, actually. And um, after a while, I got into writing thrillers and um, published with some big houses, which I continue to do. And then I also veered off into doing some of my own publishing. So I've had a kind of... Um, full range of experience as an author, um, both writing and publishing my work. Mm. And you teach, you teach writing as well, is that right? I do. I teach um, at the new school in Manhattan. I live in Brooklyn, which is about half an hour to school. I teach one class um, a semester. It's co college level and continuing education, which means it's a mix of adults, which is a great group to, to teach. I've been doing it for almost 20 years. I love it. Um, yeah, so, and I'm lately been teaching a little bit online and also in the classroom. It's really, um, it, it doesn't take a lot of my time, mostly I'm writing, but it's been a very um, rich part of my life because what you learn after a while when you teach is that you're, in a sense, a student in your own class too. So it's been a great source of learning for me as well. Well, that sounds brilliant. So why don't you tell us a bit about The Money Kill, which is your latest novel? I would love to. Um, the Money Kill is the fourth installment in my Karen Schaefer series that started with You Are Next. And in The Money Kill, um, Karen Schaefer and her husband slash partner, um, their private eyes, they um, take a case in New York where they live uh, having to do with infidelity, uh, the wife of a billionaire hires them to find out uh, if her husband is having an affair. It goes nowhere. They take a very quick stint of a job in London on their way to a family vacation in Sardinia, which is an island off the coast of Italy. They end up continuing to chase the um, billionaire's case, which comes as a big surprise to them. It's called The Money Kill because um, what starts out is a simple case of um, a private eye, meaning Karen and Mac, looking into the potential infidelity, infidelity of a billionaire uh, client turns into um, a murder case. And um, their family becomes swept into it when Karen and Mac arrive for vacation in Sardinia, an island off the coast of Italy, to discover that, their, discover that their family is missing. In trying to locate their family, they discover that this, what they thought was small case in New York concerning the billionaire, has actually followed them to Sardinia. So the stakes become very, very high for them. Um, they have to find their family, of course, and in order to do so, they have to solve what turns out to be a, a much more complicated case than they thought because all of a sudden what was an infidelity case has become a murder case. Mm. Um, so they have to solve the murder in order to get their family back. And that's what the money kill is about. So it starts as small and it gets big, which is how my novels usually go, and which is what makes them thrillers. Um, I like to take suspense and start it on kind of a small note and um, kind of twist and turn and nurture it in, until, before you know it, you're reading something that's much bigger um, than you thought. Mm. Okay, so. Wow, sound, that sounds fascinating. And I mean, I'm in London, so I'm interviewing you from London. And uh, my, yes. fa my, my fa I haven't been myself, but we have, you know, family members in Sardinia. And of course, I'm very close to Sardinia. It's not that far to Italy. No. And um, so I was wondering, you know, have you traveled to Italy? How does the book, you know, how, how, how have you incorporated your travels? Because I think you've traveled a lot, haven't you? I have traveled a lot. I love to travel. Um, 
I spent two weeks in Sardinia before I wrote the book. So I do tend to write, you know, I write about the places that I go, and I also go to the places that I want to write about. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I have a family, um, we often, not always, but often go together and incorporate it into a vacation. So with Sardinia, what we did was, uh, and I also incorporated it into work since I, I love London. I often go to London. I have a publisher there. And um, I will often do um, book-related things or go to festivals or whatever. So we often use London as a jumping-off point. I love your city. Um, But what we did a few summers ago was arrange a home exchange. And I have Karen do this in the book. Because after we did it for practical purposes. We have a house in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And these family vacations, when you when you start doing everything for four people, become very expensive. Mm. So um, my daughter had what seemed like a crazy idea, but then we realized it was a great idea to look into doing a home exchange. So we did that, and we arranged it with somebody in Sardinia. He found us, the guy in Sardinia. Um, we really hit it off. Uh, we trusted each other and we arranged this home exchange Mm -hmm. and through the course of doing that I thought oh my god that would make a great thriller because so many things could go wrong (laughs) wow that's great and I mean I use I use my travels a lot as well I've been to Israel a lot Jerusalem is really big in my mind where's you know you've obviously written lots of other books where's kind of your number one place in the world that has inspired your writing that would have to be my hometown. I've been living in Brooklyn for decades now. I came right after college. Um, you know, I was very young, and I just landed here because it was cheap, and I wanted to be a writer. And little did I know that I would end up staying, that I would own a house, raise my family here, and go to really, really love it. It's a kind of an historic area um, of brownstones. Um, it's a very kind of atmospheric part of the city. It's small enough to, to be a community. You know your neighbors, you know the people in the restaurants and the shopkeepers, but it's right outside of Manhattan. So you're part of the, the lifeblood of the larger city. Um, and I've been here long enough that I know the streets, I know the neighborhoods, I know the people. And I feel like it's my hometown, even though I didn't technically grow up here. Um, I feel very inspired by it. Mm. Ever since I was um, in my 20s wandering these streets, and it was a pretty lonely place back then. Um, It hadn't been gentrified, hadn't really been discovered. But, you know, I learned that Thomas Wolfe, the author from years and years ago, had had a house um, in the neighborhood. I found that really inspiring. Um, And I just just grew to love it. So I love to write about it. That's why Karen Schaefer... um, ultimately was based here with her family and um, the book that I, the manuscript that I just finished writing, um, he starts living here, one of the main characters, and then ends up in Manhattan because I decided to break my pattern a little bit. But it's just, I'm just so drawn, you know, it's my home. I think ultimately we all know the nooks and crannies of our homes and our neighborhoods. So I find that to be the most inspiring spot. Oh, no, that. That that's really interesting, I and mean, you know, I've I've only been to New York once. It's a fascinating <laughs> place. I'll be coming back. But you Good. know, you've talked there about you know the Sardinian holiday with your family, and it's where you know you live in Brooklyn, and and um, you talked about uh, Karen's partner who has a husband. How does that relate to your real life? <laughs> oh, her partner who is her husband. Yeah, exactly. Um, it doesn't relate to my real life at all. My <laughs> husband is a film editor. Oh. He's not a private detective. Um, no, my, you know, he's, he, he makes, um, he makes television documentaries, my husband, Oliver, and, um, he's actually a great editor for me. He's always the first reader of my work. Um, and because he has such a great sense of how to put story together, um, I trust him and he's been a terrific, uh, help to me in my writing. And then I have two teenage children too. They keep me alert and aware. Yeah, and so how much of, of you is in Karen? Um, I, I would say to some extent I'm absolutely there. She's, I, I've always written her in the first person, uh, so she's an I character. 
Um, so I, I do open myself up and put my um, raw thoughts and emotions, I filter them through her. Mm. At the same time, I deliberately gave her characteristics and attributes that I don't have. I made her tall. I'm short. Um, I made her a, a risk lover. Mm. I am risk averse. You know, you will never see me jumping out of an airplane with a parachute <laughs> ever. I won't even get on a, on a um, Ferris wheel anymore. Um, so I made her kind of danger loving, risk loving. Um, I made her um, really good at uh, self defense. I'm not that bad at self defense. Yeah. But I gave her a lot of attributes that I don't have because when you write, when you create a character, it's an opportunity for you to um, to reimagine hmm. yourself, and you know, you act and move and live through the character, you know, the main characters, or really all the characters. So Karen um, is me in in a raw, more intellectual, emotional sense, but she's not me in that she's better than I am. Yeah. I think we all do that with our characters, especially with women. They need to have fighting yeah. skills for thrillers, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Yours do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. My Morgan yeah. Sierra does Krav Maga, you know, the Israeli martial art. So, yeah, it's important. So but, um, I wanted to ask you there as well, um, you know, you talked there about how, you know, you filter your thoughts through Karen. What are the obsessions and kind of themes that run through all your books that kind of keep coming up again and again? I would say uh, family in, in distress. Uh, for me, the root of every single thriller that I've written, uh, definitely all of the Karen books, um, but really all of them have to do with um, threatened home life and threatened family life. Um, that's where I've, I found my um, emotional voice. And, and really because when I started writing them, my children were very, very little. And I... Um, you know, I thought, what was, what would be the scariest thing um, that could happen to me? And that would be that, some, that my family, my children were threatened. And the next scariest thing that could happen would be that I would be unable to defend them, to help them. Mm -hmm. And that became the root of my very first thriller, um, which was called Five Days in Summer. And um, that's been out for about a decade now. Um, and from there, I really tapped into this sense because I was, you know, always with my children and so deeply involved in their lives. And obviously, when you start to have a family, that becomes the center of your universe, your top priority. And um, and I really used that. Um, and it helped me to kind of deal with those anxieties. I think, you know, when you're a parent, you, you go through the day, you handle everything, and then you lie in bed at night. And all of a sudden, the worries rush in. What if this had happened? What if I hadn't, you know, crossed um, the street a little faster when the, you know, car came this close to the stroller? Things like that. Um, so I mind the anxieties and the fears for my work. Now that my, because actually the book that I just finished writing, um, the protagonists don't have children. For I decided I had written 10 or 11 books in a row with, that were very kind of child-based. And for Karen, um, for Karen Schaefer, it was the loss of her child that propelled her in the first book, You Are Next, mm. um, to become so reckless and fearless. So um, so that's my answer. Family life has been at the um, center of it for me. And now it's starting to move, now that I have teenagers, um, it's starting to move a little um, away from that. It's always there, whether it's children or extended family, but um, family and mm. home. Oh, that's great. That's a real a theme that attracts a lot of people. Now, um, you, you know, you've mentioned your family, you've mentioned your teaching. What is your writing life like? Do you have a special place or a routine? How does that work? I have an office in my house um, with a door. It's a nice room. Um, it's my own space. And um, basically, um, I, when I get up in the morning, I don't rush to my desk. I um, make my way there gradually after I've had breakfast and I've had some coffee or some tea and hang out with my cats and read the paper. So I take my time in the morning. Mm -hmm. Again, now that my children aren't little and I'm not up at the crack of dawn and racing everybody off to school and stuff, I, I can kind of do it at my own pace. 
And once I get there, I work for hours and hours and hours. I may take a break and go take a yoga class or something or exercise or run errands. But um, I spend the day at my desk really until evening. Um, and that's my routine is once I get there, I'm there. And, um, and I write, you know, I generally write about a book a year. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's become a very kind of easy, comfortable rhythm. When I'm working on a book, I like to stay very, very focused on it and write every day Mm -hmm. until it's done. Although because I have a family, I take the weekends off most of the time, unless a deadline is coming really close, and then I'll work on the weekends. So I'm disciplined. It's my job. I get up every day. I do it. Hmm. Yeah. And I, like, like any other working parent, I push the other stuff off to the weekends. So if I am in my office on the weekends, it might be because I'm doing um, family paperwork or other kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, so and, and what do you read for pleasure? Um, I read whatever I feel like reading. Um, and that means it goes across the board. I read a lot of novels. I love novels, and my favorite thing to read are novels. Um, I do read thrillers. I read uh, non-thrillers. I read um, bi- sometimes I read biographies, and I want to read more biographies. I'm very interested in people's lives. I read obituaries a lot. Um, which I don't think is morbid because no. I love to read the scope and the sweep of people's lives. Um, but I mostly read a lot of novels. Uh, give, give us, give us a couple of examples of books. A couple you like. of examples. Well, um, my favorite novel of the last year was like a million other people, Gone Girl by yeah. Gillian Flynn. I just loved it. Um, I'm reading The Secret Wife right now, which is in, an interesting novel. It's compared to it, but it's um, Gone Girl still is hanging in there as my as my top. Um, I've read a lot of Patricia Highsmith Mm. over time, and I keep coming back to her. I love the um, way she builds character and suspense and the way she writes about um, her her sociopathic protagonists. I just think it's brilliant, the kind of slow boil um, and and a buildup of the danger that her her protagonists present um, to the world. I find it just mesmerizing. One book that I always come back to as an amazing thriller and that I have my classes read a lot is um, an old novel by John Fowles called The Collector. Mm. Have you read it? No, I haven't. No. Okay. If you want to learn about um, how to um, create a truly terrifying character that, and, and a suspense novel that's really uh, character-driven and, and ultimately quite terrifying... The Collector is a fabulous example. Um, I used to give my uh, make, give it as one of the options for my students to read, but last semester I I required it, and everybody read it, and they were pretty much blown away. The novel was written in the 60s. Mm-hmm. Um, John Fowles went on just to become known as a uh, you know one of our great literary authors. Um, the Collector was his first novel, and it's absolutely a suspense novel. Um, psychological suspense, just fabulous. So um, I, I just absolutely loved that. I also count um, Nabokov's Lolita as oh. a thriller, oh. which well, I say I like to say because I know it ir- would probably irritate some people. Um, you know, it's a story of a predator a pedophile, and again, it's an example of getting deep into the characters. Um, identity and mind and of course the language is so dynamic and gorgeous so he feels very real which is where the menace is so I you know I think my um, ultimate uh, aspiration as a novelist is to be able to create characters that are so powerful that even writing them that, that you can have the liberty to create the um, story in a slow boil way and yet make it truly terrifying. Mm, wow, they've given us a lot of good reading lists there. <laughs> That's brilliant. Good. So, um, where can people find you and your books online? I have a website, everything is there. It's katyaleaf.com. And um, 
Everything is on my website. My books are available everywhere, uh, absolutely online, sometimes in bookstores, depending if they're newly published. Um, or, or, you know, you can look around in bookstores um, in the U.S. and the U.K., but online, super easy to order. Fantastic. And they just came out in audio, too, a oh, lot of them. Not the Karen Schaefer's yet. But I have audiobooks, ebooks, and print books for just about everything. Brilliant. Well, thanks ever so much for your time, Katya. Thank you, Joanne. It was a pleasure talking with you.